Okay, so founders keep coming to me with the same story and I'm tired of repeating myself, so I thought I'd make a video. And here's how the story goes. It goes, oh, I used to work with this guy. He's really fantastic. We work really well together. Uh, he's an incredible salesperson or business development person or engineer or whatever. Um, I think he'd be a great fit on the team, but you know, I can't afford him. He works for Dropbox or something like that. It always goes like that. And they're like, I could never, I could never afford to hire this guy. What do I do? So first of all, stop. Like, no. I mean, the party line in Silicon Valley is like, people join early stage companies for the mission. You like working together as a team. They're in it for something other than the money. And you all work together on something you really believe in. And you sacrifice your personal gain to put that forward. I believe in this. It's great. And this is some of your best team members, for sure. Not all of your employees are going to be like that. Um, and that's okay too, right? Like a, it's a job, you're offering employment um, in exchange for something people f like find valuable. That's great. So, but instead of assuming that you can't afford them, never assume that, never assume that. Because you don't know what's important to them. And you have to ask. So there's two questions that I always recommend asking. The first is, what are you looking to get out of the next phase of your career? you will be shocked at what people say to this. So sometimes they're looking for uh, work-life balance. They're looking for a career change. They're looking for a specific title. They're looking for uh, a part of the country they want to be able to work in. They're looking for a difference that they want to make in the world, they're, right? It's, it's all kinds of things. And you can usually compete on a lot of those things in ways that the big companies with big salaries can't compete. And you can offer benefits that they would never dream of. But you have to ask people in order to find out. Second question I always recommend asking is, what can I do for you? And this is kind of the same question. It's like, how can I help you achieve whatever you want out of the next phase of your career? And, and like, what role can my company play in your career path? And if you ask this of people and then take steps to create it for them, you will be surprised at how excited they are about making that next phase of their company, of their career at your company. So I would like a couple examples, uh, right, at my companies. One of our engineers, amazing guy, right, he's worked for all the top tech companies. Uh, he didn't want to work on Tuesdays. That's fine. We were like, don't work on Tuesdays. And we were able to get talent that, right, we otherwise would have been really hard for us to compete for because we can do something that Facebook is never going to do. Like Facebook is never going to say, yeah, don't show up to work on Tuesdays. You don't have to come to any meetings then. Um, but we were able to do that. We were also able to do flexible schedules with um, parents, right? So you know, we had people who worked 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and then like 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. because that's when it worked for their kids' schedules. That works for us too. Um, and so we had people who lived in Utah that worked fine for us too. It was less novel uh, <laughs> these days now that everyone works from home and all over the place, but in those days it was more interesting. And so find the things that somebody wants and then compete on those and don't hold yourself to, oh, we have to look like the last company that I worked for. Um, we have to have the same constraints. We have to be as rigid as they were because you can be more flexible, attract great talent, um, and particularly if you've worked with someone before and you really want to work with them, that's a great opportunity to help them, um, say they want to do something kind of risky. Say they have like cool new ideas that they could never get buy-in for at their work. Can they execute on those cool new ideas at your job? Or let's say they spent their whole life in growth marketing, but they always wanted to be the person designing the creative and designing the ads. If you know this person is awesome, you can take a risk on them and you can let them have a different job title and start out um, at your company and hire them while other people wouldn't be willing to take a chance on somebody in a new role where they don't have any experience in that specific industry. So do this, you can get these people, their current job is not that impressive, and just because you can't compete on comp or you don't wanna compete on salary, um, I don't think it means you can't get the people that you want in your company because when you ask people what they're looking for in the next phase of their career, very few people are going to answer, you know what, I'm just optimizing for the absolute most number of dollars that I can get. Because if they were, they're not the people that 
you're looking to bring on board anyway.